In this video, we're going to do some last minute revision on indefinite integrals. The idea of a video is to work through 13 basic examples and look at the techniques that we could use to integrate them. I've done an hour long tutorial on which techniques to use when we're integrating. So if you're new to the topic, please do check that out as this is seen purely as last minute revision. So let's go ahead and start. We're asked to integrate the following. So the first one now is the integral of e to the x with respect to x. Often when we're dealing with these, it's easier to think about what the derivative of the function is. So if we've got now e to the x and we differentiate it, we get e to the x. Therefore, when we integrate it, we're also going to get e to the x. So we have e to the x plus a constant of integration. On the next one, we've got the integral of 1 over 2x with respect to x. I'd actually prefer to see this written as 1 half the integral of 1 over x with respect to x. The reason being is that I know that if we have the natural log of x, the derivative is 1 over x. When we're integrating, we need to be slightly careful as it's the natural log of the modulus of x. That stops us taking the log of a negative number. So we can write this as 1 half the natural log of the modulus of x plus a constant. So if you say to yourself now, what does the natural log of x differentiate to give? It gives me 1 over x. So quite clearly, we can see the relationship between the derivative and the integral. With this one, we can just do it by term by term. So if I'm looking now at the integral of 1 plus 1 over x with respect to x, integrating 1 is just going to give me x. We've already seen now that integrating 1 over x will be the natural log of the modulus of x, and then we just add a constant. So nice and straightforward, it's just a case of putting these things together. If we look at the next one, we've got x plus 2 over x. The way I'm going to deal with this one is to split the numerator. So what we're going to have is the integral of x over x plus 2 over x. And we're integrating now with respect to x. So if we tidy this up, x over x is just 1. So we've got now the integral of 1. And then I'm going to have plus 2 lots of 1 over x. You certainly don't have to do that. I just think it's, again, easier to see that we're going to have the log of the modulus of x. So integrating 1 with respect to x is x plus 2 lots of the natural log of the modulus of x plus our constant of integration. You might be asked to show that the integral now of x plus 2 over x with respect to x is x plus the natural log of x squared. All you'd need to do in that case is just bring your power up just here and rewrite it. OK, let's look at the next one. Again, with the constant, I prefer to take it the other side of the integral sign. So what we've got is 1 plus e to the x. The reason I prefer to do that is if we have now a messy fraction, I don't want to be multiplying through constantly with it. I just want to leave it one side of the integral sign, deal with a straightforward integral, and then multiply that through if required. Also, if we have functions of functions, it can get a little messy. So what we're going to have then is now the integral of 1 with respect to x is x. The integral of e to the x is going to be e to the x plus a constant of integration. So nice and straightforward, and we can write it like so. OK, let's look at the next one. We've got the integral of e to the 5x. If I differentiate e to the 5x, I get 5e to the 5x. That's by the chain rule. We differentiate the outside function, we rewrite the inside function and multiply through by the derivative. So if we're going to reverse that process, often we call it inspection, we simply now integrate the outside function, rewrite the inside function, and divide through by the derivative of the inside function. The result with the exponential is just one fifth e to the 5x. If you're unsure, go ahead and differentiate this. So when you're differentiating the exponential function, the end result is that you're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And we can see now differentiating by, if we differentiate this, we would multiply now by 5, and that will give us e to the 5x. So the integral is going to be 1 fifth. OK, let's deal with this next one. We've got the integral of cos squared 3x with respect to x. So this time we've got a power. What I'm going to do is use a trig identity, and I'm going to use the double angle identity for cosine. We can write now, and in general, we can write cos 2x is equal to 2 cos squared x minus 1. So in this case, what I can write is cos 6x will be equal to 2 cos squared 3x minus 1. All I'm doing is using the double angle identities. So if I add 1 to both sides and divide by 2, I can say that 1 half the quantity cos of 6x plus 1 will be equal to cos squared of 3x. 
So all I'm looking to do now is integrate this right here. So if we do that, I'm going to write now one half, so we've got one half, the integral of cos of 6x, and then we've got plus 1, and we're integrating with respect to x. If we consider now the sine, and we'll write the derivative with respect to x of sine of kx, we're going to end up now with k cos kx. And this is something that we've seen in the past. Therefore, if we're integrating, we're going to integrate the outside function, rewrite the inside function, and divide through by the derivative. What we've done here is the reverse process. So we're going to end up now with 1 half, and then we'll have 1 over 6 sine of 6x, and then all we're doing is integrating 1 with respect to x, which will give me plus x plus a constant. And again, if you need to tidy that up in any way or solve something along these lines, then you can just multiply through if you wish. But this would be perfectly fine in terms of the answer. Okay, let's look at the next one here. We got sine 2x cos x. There are a few different ways that we could deal with this one. We could use the addition formulae on it, we could look to rewrite it, or we could use substitutions. What I'm going to do is just write to the examiner. I'm going to say that sine 2x will be equal to 2 sine x cos x. So what we've actually got here now is two lots of the integral. And I'm going to multiply these two. So what I've got here is sine x cos squared x. So we're integrating now sine x cos squared x. And I've got two lots of that. Okay, one way to do this is to use a substitution. Alternatively, we could see this now as the derivative now of the inside function. If I took cos cubed x and wrote this as cos of x cubed and used the chain rule, we would differentiate the outside function. So that's going to give me three lots of cos uh, x, so we drop the power by one, and multiply through by the derivative of the inside function. So if I was differentiating this, let's write this derivative with respect to x of cos cubed x, this would now give me minus sine x. So if we consider what we've got here, we can do this by inspection. So if I look here, I've got sine x, that's positive. I've got the cos squared x, which I know if I differentiate cos cubed, I'm going to get some component to that. So if we look at what we've got, we can actually write this now as minus 2 thirds cos cubed x. So that's one way that we could do it. So all I've done is done this by inspection, and I'd write to the examiner by inspection or observation. So that's just reversing the chain rule. So by inspection. You might not always spot that. You might be given a substitution. So if you wanted to use a substitution at this stage, you could let, and I'll write it here, let u be equal to cos x. So if we now find du dx, we could say that that was going to be minus sine x. So we could say at this stage that du was equal to minus sine x dx. Now we can see here that I've got sine x dx, so I could actually write this now and just sub this in. So let's, in fact, let's write it just here. What I could write, and I'll write it just here, we've got minus du is equal to sine x dx. So if I sub that in here, what I've got is minus 2, the integral now of cos squared x, so cos squared x du. I'm just making this substitution right here. We already know that cos x is u, so what we'd have then now is minus 2, the integral of u squared du. We can integrate u squared, that's nice and straightforward. We'd end up with minus 2 lots of 1 third u cubed plus a constant. So we could write this now as minus 2 thirds u cubed, so minus 2 thirds u cubed plus a constant. We know that u is cos x, so we could write this as minus 2 thirds cos cubed x plus a constant. So you can see we can either do it by inspection or we can do it now by a substitution. And often you will be given the substitutions. There's certainly another way that you could look at that as well um, in terms of p, uh, sine of p plus sine of q. Um, I prefer not to go down that route if possible. So I'd just simply rewrite it either way around and hope that if I was struggling, they gave me a substitution. If not, think to yourself, are there any trig identities that I can write out and can I do this by inspection. If you can do it by inspection, go ahead. 
as stated though, there are lots of different approaches to that question. Okay, let's look at the next one. We've got tan squared x. So I'm looking at that thinking, well, I don't really know what differentiates to give me tan squared x. But what I do know, and I'll write to the examiner, that sec squared x will be equal to tan squared x plus 1. Now, I know that if I differentiate tan x, I get sec squared x. So what I could do now is subtract the 1 from both sides and write sec squared x minus 1 is equal to tan squared x. So instead of tan squared x dx, what I'm going to do is write that this is going to be the integral of sec squared x minus 1 dx. I can deal with this. I know the derivative of tan x with respect to x is sec squared x. So the integral is just going to be tan x, and then we're going to integrate minus 1 with respect to x, which will give me minus x plus a constant. So yet another trig identity has helped us out. So all I've done is rewritten it, Show me exam that I know my trig identities, rearranged it and integrated it. Okay, let's look at the next one here. What we've got here, and I'll just scribble it here because it's not easy to see. What's that? We've got 2x plus 1 over now x squared plus x. The first thing I look at when I see these is, is the numerator the derivative or some part of the derivative of the denominator? If it is, what we can say in general, and I'll write it just here, we can say that the integral of f dashed of x over f of x with respect to x will give us now the natural log of the modulus of the f of x, and then we have some constant. So let's just, let's work this backwards. Let's say we've got now, uh, let's say we've got the natural log of, uh, let's say we've got, um, we'll go for 3x plus 4. So now, if I think about this, if I differentiate this, we write 1 over the inside function, which is 3x plus 4, and multiply through by the derivative of the inside function, which gives me 3. So when I look at 3 over 3x plus 4, I say to myself, hang on a moment, that kind of looks like the derivative of this. So all we need to do is reverse this. Now, it won't always be the case that it's the exact derivative, so you might have some multiple of it. And sometimes you need to sidestep. So let's look at this one. What we've got then is this right here. Now if I differentiate x squared plus x, just, just look at the, the derivative now. Derivative with respect to x of x squared plus x is going to be equal to 2x plus 1. Therefore, it's the exact derivative. So I can say by inspection, and I'll probably even write this out, by inspection, so we can say by inspection, we're going to have now the integral, so the integral of 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x with respect to x will be equal to the natural log of the modulus of this function right here, which is going to be x squared plus x plus a constant of integration. So all I've done is gone ahead and sort of thought to myself, well, what would that be? Well, that kind of looks like the derivative, so I'll deal with it. Okay, can we apply that to the next one? What have we got here? We've got the integral now of, uh, we've got 10x to the fourth over x to the fifth plus 1. So this again is looking hopeful. Now if we went to reverse this, and often, I mean, there are a few different ways you can do this. If I have a natural log now of x to the fifth plus 1, and I wanted the derivative with respect to x, then what I'm going to have is 1 over the inside function, which is x to the fifth plus 1, multiplied through by the derivative of the inside function, which is going to give me 5x to the fourth. Now, I've actually got here something slightly different. I've got 10x to the fourth. So we can say again, by inspection, and I'll just write it down here, by inspection, so by inspection, we can say that the integral of this is going to be now two lots of a natural log of the modulus of this function right here, and then that's going to be x to the fifth plus one plus a constant. Another way that you could do this now is to rewrite it. And the way that often, if you're unhappy with working out the multiple, if you write it as 10x to the fourth, the natural log of now the denominator, which is x to the fifth plus 1, then you divide through by the derivative of the inside function, which is 5x to the fourth, you can see now this is going to cancel. So we can see here this is going to give me 2. So if you're not happy, rewrite it as 10x to the fourth, multiply and then divide through by the derivative, and we'll see now that these are going to cancel. 10 over 5 gives me 2, and we're back here with exactly the same. So don't just jump at it, realise that you can use um, 
a little bit of uh, sidestepping with that one. Okay, let's uh, look at the next one here. We've got now the integral. So this is the integral now of cos x over sine x. And I'm looking at that thinking, do I need a trig identity? You know, what's that cotex? Do I know the integral of cotex? Not really. What is it though? If we look at it now, we've got the function in the denominator and the derivative in the numerator. So this is another case of f dashed of x, or some multiple of it, over the f of x, which gives rise now to the log of the modulus of f of x plus a constant. So all we're going to have here, and again, I'm going to write by inspection, I'm going to write this out in the exam. By inspection, we can say now that this is going to be the natural log of the modulus now of sine x plus our constant. So that's all we've got. It's a straightforward integral. Once we spot that this is the derivative in the denominator, uh, sorry, the derivative in the numerator of the denominator. We can do exactly the same here. Now, with tan x, we can rewrite this and we can write tan x as sine x over cos x. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's write this now. This is going to be sine x over cos x. So we're looking at the integral now with respect to x as sine x over cos x. If we differentiate cos x, we get minus sine x. So we don't quite have the exact derivative. So all we'd need to do is write minus the natural log of the modulus of cos x. So all I've done essentially is just thought to myself, well, I don't have the derivative there, therefore I'm going to do it this way. The alternative is to write it back where we were as sine x multiplied by the natural log of cos x and then divide through by the derivative of the inside function, which is minus sine x. They're going to cancel and that leaves you your minus uh, the natural log of cos x. Now, we might see this written slightly differently. So let's see this now back in action. So this time, you might see, you might be asked to show that this now is the natural log of the modulus of sec x. So using log laws, we could write this now, bringing the power up. So we bring the power up, and we would have, instead of minus 1 here, we would have it just here. We could write now that cos x to the power of minus 1 is equal now to sec x. This is just 1 over. So this now is our reciprocal identity, and we could say now that's the modulus, now the natural log of the modulus of sec x plus a constant. So it can be written in either way. It's entirely up to you if you want, or if you're, put, uh, if you're forced into a way uh, in the exam, then just go the way that they want. So you're saying to yourself, is this easy to do by inspection? Can I do it by inspection? These are just standard results. So standard results, standard results. Can I do this by inspection? Is it a standard result? Do I need a trig identity or can I use a bit of sidestepping? What can I do here? Is this one now the derivative in the numerator? So go through the list. In the hour long video, there is a list. So you're saying to yourself, is it partial fractions? Is it a substitution needed? Is it by inspection? Is it a trig identity? And you just work through and say to yourself, how can I manipulate this to make my integral easy. So there we go, that's some brief revision. This was only ever intended for last minute. So if it has left you a little um, out in terms of the way you feel about the integration, do go back to the main topic area on this and look at those techniques.